It's time for your midweek charge here on the EMBN show. And tonight we have some amazing new kids bikes from the USA. Yes, and we've got brands popping up all over the world and we'll be looking at folding e-bikes. Yeah, we've got Game of Thrones getting in on the action and we'll be taking a closer look at High Bike's new fly-on system. All this with Martin sitting nervously in anticipation from what's coming ahead. I cannot wait! Martin, yes. did you hear did you hear the Don and Chris talk about e-bikes for kids last week? Oh, I did, show? yeah, I was enjoying it. In yeah. the meantime, I've seen this new brand from the USA called Stay Sick, S T A Y S Y C. They've got two new two, two new bikes, 16 inch and 12 inch. They are absolutely oh, amazing. Great. I wish I was five years old. Can you imagine? It's ridiculous. So uh, you can run them in with the power on or the power off. Remember, if the power's off, you can push, balance, or coast in non-powered mode. Then you switch the motor on and you can, it's all about learning to coast and brake. Um, I think it's an amazing thing to learn, learn oh. bikes. It's great about learning hand-eye coordination, balance, all those things, those key mountain bike skills. And it's starting riding with, uh, you start riding with confidence. I've noticed just on balance bikes, how, how easily people, uh, little kids learn to ride bikes now. And then you've got these little motored bikes now to take you that step further. Um, and like you say, fun, oh my goodness. It looks yeah. incredible. So, the, so let me tell you how it works. You basically got three modes, training mode, transitional mode, and advanced mode. Yes. That gives you like three different levels of support. Yeah. And I mean, it's got, I think it's a, a great thing to have. They run for about 45 minutes to an hour. They charge in 45 minutes to an hour. But get this, $699. Wow, that is amazing. Talk about Christmas present, done and dusted. Oh, so much fun. I'd like a big version of that, wouldn't you? I want to pick up on a story which I led with last week from Eurobike and Husqvarna, the brand that brought us revving chainsaws, garden equipment, the brand with a gun barrel as a logo. Now, their new range of bikes is really quite interesting. Mm. They have three. They have the Mountain Cross, which is 150 mil travel. Then they have the Hard Cross at 180 mil travel. And then finally, the Extreme Cross, 200 mil travel. Now, I reckon these are nice looking bikes, Mark. I think they they're look. quite striking, right? They look really cool, and I really love that uh, bash plate system they've got at the back. Mm. It's very Moto esque. I really like it. looks like the uh, motor kind of loads from the bottom, and it's got this protective plate that's keeping it all in in, uh, in check. Um, Which a is really a nice approach, and they're striking looking things. I, th I think it's quite unique, right? Yeah, I think and it's I, quite refreshing to see uh, Husqvarna getting on the action. Yeah, and I really love this extreme cross version. I mean, that that really is a serious bit. I think the name cross yeah. in yeah. any mountain bike is a good thing, right? Yeah, it's a step in the right direction. It's very, uh, yeah, it's aggressive, isn't it? It's really yeah. aggressive look and very, very cool. Talking about aggressive, it seems that Nico Vulios, the 10 times world downhill champion, that engineer, that technician, that ambassador of e-bikes is getting back to fitness after quite a horrific crash on his e-bike. He's probably trying to do this roll off in a rock down in the south of France. He busted his wrist, busted some ribs, smashed his face up, and uh, yeah, anyway, he's back. Thank goodness. Back on the road to fitness. Yeah, and it looks nasty, doesn't it? He's taken it quite a knock to yeah. the head. Obviously, those those injuries to the ribs and the wrist as well. But yeah. um, you know what? I do take a little bit of comfort. It's <laughs> just a little bit nice to know Nico can make mistakes. Exactly. Well, That's not a bad thing to know. E-bikes is a dangerous old sport, Mark. It is. Yeah. Right, and back on to new brands. Uh, check out this brand here, BESV. And they've got the TRB 1 AM. Now, I'm not so sure about it. It's a bit of a strange design, but it's got a 756 watt hour battery, uh, bros motor. Uh, Mart, what's your thoughts on this? I one? love it. I love it. I think it looks cool. It's got like this dual frame that hugs the battery. It's really nicely styled. It is, you could say it's, it is different, you but see, I like it a lot. You see, I think with the, with the plastic stripped away, it's actually quite a nice looking, looking design, but I think the plastics... Yeah, the plastics do hide the metal work, um, which is, which is kind of nice to look at without all that plastics on, but it's, oh, I don't know, it's so nice to see a refreshing approach mm. um, and yeah, that, that motor influences. It looks coming. to me like the battery actually slots out. That's yeah. the whole reason the plastic's there. So the battery yeah. slots out vertically, right? Uh, moving on, uh, this folding stainless steel space frame bike from Motor Perilla. I totally missed it at Eurobike. I wish it had been oh, there. It's 16 so cool. inch fat tyres, oh. 250 watts, Shimano 7 speed, about 15 kilos. Oh, range of 50Ks. Yeah, I like to say, uh, we were talking about earlier on what a thing to have in the back of your car. Right? Oh, pull uh, that out. 
park in a city, ride that in. I just, it looks, looks Bit so, of off-road fun. It oh, looks so cute, doesn't it? Hilarious. Wow. Hilarious. I think it looks a little bit like a Ducati. You know that, that space frame is a little bit like their, uh, Do you know yeah, what? It does. Ducati That's monster. another thing I like to have on the back of the car. Yes, absolutely. Very nice. Um, now then, Jason Momoa. Have you heard of this character? I have. Jason Momoa. He is. Um, he Band is from of Gypsies. Band of Gypsies. He's from uh, Game of Thrones, of course. Um, what do you mean, of course? Well, of I course. I've never seen Most Game of Thrones. Most people, Steve, have seen Game of Thrones. So I've been yeah. in the bloody woods too long. But anyway, yeah. he seems he's into his e-bikes. He's loving his specialised uh, Levo up in the hills of uh, Santa Monica, I think. Yeah, yeah. Or somewhere in California. Yeah, it's great. I mean, he wouldn't be have any problem if he fell in the water because he is like Aquaman, isn't he? From I the don't know. Marvel films. Is it Aquaman? Something Looks like, like a big that. dude. He is a big dude. He's right. obviously got a pretty good bike pulling him up their mills because he's yeah he's got a bit of muscle on him. Right, you better tell yeah. him that then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now more news this week. I had this video through from a little village in northern Italy called Molini di Triora. Now Triora is where the last witches were burnt back, oh, back years and years ago. I know ago. it well. Do you know it well? No, I've never heard. Anyhow, of it. this is a very iconic uplift location in Italy. Uh, and it seems that e-bikes are slowly taking over the village. On, on the weekend, there was everybody converged there on their e-bikes simply because the terrain is so ridiculously steep. Uh, it's, it makes perfect e-bike territory. Great so things stuff. are changed. Things are always changing, and no more so than in northern Italy. And do you think they'll be burning those retro mountain bikers? Possibly. Do you think? <laughs> They're maybe gonna like burn them on the stake. Do you know what? I think there could be a time in the future, Martin, where e-bikes become mountain bikes and, yeah. and mountain bikes become vintage bikes. Redundant, redundant. But I, I don't know if I want that, and I definitely don't want anyone burnt on stakes. That was definitely, a, I was kidding. Right, Matt, let's talk about the high bike fly on uh, e performance nice. system bit by bit. And let's break it down and see if it actually is as innovative as a lot of people are talking about. Now, I'm going to start off with the heart of the matter carbon fiber frame. Now, it has some ports on it which, which cool the battery down. Now, ports aren't new on an e bike, Focus have already got it on, on their e bike. Um, they're not actually claiming a performance advantage by using carbon fiber. What they're trying to do here is all about in, it's all about integration yeah. of the motor. So that's the key bit, really. So, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I love the look of the frame. I think they have tackled a lot of issues on an e-bike um, mm. and tried to come up with something very slick for each thing, mm -hmm. um, and including like the, the integration, like I said, but the digitization of yeah. the bike. Yeah. Um, of course, this is the first high bike with their own motor system. So it's not, not just a high bike with a motor fitted, it's the e-performance system from high yeah. bike, right? Yeah, and I think that is a very significant part of the how this bike looks different. It's a yeah. very neat solution. Solution yeah. to an e-bike mower. Yeah. So I don't think I don't think the, the actual fact is that the carbon fiber is innovative, but it's that, like you mentioned, the mo integration of the motor. Yeah. Well, I will say they have got a flip chip on it, which means you can adjust the geometries. There's not many e-bikes out there that can do that. Yeah, and that's really cool actually, because thinking about the geometry is really really important, especially someone like yourself. You love getting into those details. I kind of do, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, on the whole, I think it's it's pretty innovative. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's a pretty good job actually on terms of the chassis. Right, let's move on, Martin. What have we got next? We've got the tail lights. Tail Controversial. Lights. Uh, I love this touch, okay? <laughs> now, things like this that I really think move uh, the industry on a little bit. It might sound silly as just little tail lights, but these little details really draw people in. I think it looks fantastic. Um, and I, I really think as you could skim over this like it's nothing, but I think this is a very nice touch. I know a lot of people in my area. In the winter, there's a big e there's a big mountain bike following, and they're always out two, three times a week in the winter months. And you know what? There's a lot of transfer stages on the road, yeah, and I think yeah. having lights is a good safety thing. Yeah. And let's face it, people sooner or later are going to be bringing out blank in plates to put in place of the lights in the summer months when you don't need to use them, right? Right, on the subject of lights, the front light, integrated front light on the, light on the bike, um, 5,000 lumens. Now, what 
gets me is that the mountain bike industry, no brand has made an integrated light into their frame where it's, it's not difficult, right? No, you know, you have all, at the minute you've got all these bolt-on, strap-on lights with the battery and cables hanging off here and there. And there. Why, why has it not been done before? I or, can't, or have I missed it? I, I, I can't understand why it hasn't been done. Um, I really like this integration of the lights. Um, I don't like the name. It's called the Sky Beamer. What's your problem with Sky Beamer? I don't know. It just doesn't sound very mountain bike 5, to me. 5,000 lumens. Yeah, it sounds like a good light, bad yeah. name. Don't get me wrong. But that, there's lots going on in this bike. It's not just the lights. What about its motor? The motor, the HPR 120S from uh, a small, a German company, the engineering quality on this is off the charts. But the big news, I think, is that now, High Bike have got the system, so it's got the all, it's in there with the big hitters. You're in there with Bros, Bosch, Shimano, Yamaha, Panasonic, TP is in there. Because I guarantee you, people are gonna be all over this bike. 120 yeah. Newton meters, that is, Seriously. it's next level. Yeah. It's next level. Yeah, Apparently yeah. you can climb this bike on technical terrain at 25 k's an hour. It's wow. Abs, it's, I think this is big news actually. So exciting. It's extreme power, it's compact. I, I just, I cannot wait. Yeah, this mo the motor's cool, um, the lights are great, the frame's carbon, cable routing. Another simple, simple touch. They've done a lovely job of this. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But I think these these are definitely new frontiers. Remember, the, the, t uh, the, the TP motor is actually on a bike called the um, M1 Technic Spitzing at the minute. So it's not, it's not a new motor, but um, yeah, it's f the integration and everything, it's, it's definitely out there, I think. So I think <laughs> another major tick for high bike when it comes to that. Right, next up, Martin, is the thumb operated mode switch on this bike. Now, I think this is a really crucial part of the kit because on so many e bikes, the, you're trying to get on top of the, of the mode switch, you can, you can, it's not quite ergonomically right. Yeah. But yeah. this is color bars, coordinated. Under the bars, where you want it, you can really shift between those modes while you're riding in confidence. Mm. Another nice touch. Another tick? Absolutely. Another, Another tick. tick. What about the display? Yeah. Display, yeah. Nothing revolutionary, but nice a great though. training tool. Again, it's color coordinated, it's super slick, super neat. Not yeah. quite innovative, but it's it's up there. It's the integration, I think, is what's key with that. Yeah, lovely finish to that. Right, what are we moving on to now then? What about the battery? Now the battery is big news. 630 watt hours, which is gonna give that bike a lot of range. Now remember, there's a lot of power kicking out from that TP yeah. motor, so it's gonna need that. Yeah. Um, it's gonna take forever to charge. But that's where you're wrong. One hour to get 80% charge wow. on this bike. That's brilliant. Uh, it, can be, it can be secured against theft, which is a really nice touch. And they say this waterproof. Wow, that's so great. I think, I think this is, it's close. Yeah, when you get into the details on this bike, it is, you know, it is a step ahead, I think. It's yeah. got a lot of details and they do all add up. Yeah, and this quick charge time, remember, that that is definitely a big tick for yeah. high bike. Yeah. And finally, the speed sensor. Now, this can react significantly fast to, f faster and dynamically to changing conditions. 18 pickup points on that speed sensor. When you're on hill climb, it means you can engage that motor really, really quickly. So Yeah, so that's, that's almost like the same thing as having a rear hub rotor with more pulls in it. It's kind Pretty of much. the equivalent kind of Pretty thing. Much, yeah. It means it's gonna come in quicker. Yeah. On my trials bike, I always used to have a special hub that Hope made for me. Of with course, of lot, course. With course a lot more pulls on it which meant that, um, or teeth for the pulls, which meant that I had much quicker engagement. Because you're going to be going ba bam, ba bam, yeah, you right? It, you, want it, you want that chain tension straight away. That dun, instant dun, 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 drive, right? And that's a similar thing on this high bike. Martin, another tick for high bike? Another tick, and I cannot wait to see what you do with this bike. It's going to be so <laughs> much fun. Honestly, I kind of wait to have a spin on it. It's it was cool. definitely the standout bike at Eurobike. Visually, uh, in terms of all the new bits and pieces they got mm. on there, I already emailed and asked for one. Now we've had a few comments on customization of your e-bikes over the last few months. And this is from Murray, or Kai Aura, as he calls himself. Uh, he's got the 800 version of the Merida instead of the top of the range one. And uh, he's replaced quite a few parts on this bike. First up, he's gone uh, for a Z4 pots to replace the SLX2 pots on this nice. bike. Um, he's reduced the size of the rotors from 200 millimeters down to 180 millimeter because he says at 70 kilos, he simply doesn't need those big rotors. Uh, he's gone for 150 mil dropper post and he's gone for 160 mil XT cranks on this bike. Yeah, but there's lots going on actually that you can't see. Upgrades you can't see. He's got a RockShox 2019 debonair upgrade kit. 
Um, fitted to the fork, also used the opportunity to increase fork travel to 170 mil. Crikey, nice touch. Um, tubeless tyres, I mean, he's done that, got some foam inserts in no, there this, using this, a pool this, noodle. This is it, what is a pool noodle? A pool noodle is like a float that you basically, looks like a big long bit of spaghetti that you float on, yeah. and if you cut it down, you can make it uh, basically like a tubeless insert. Why would you float on spaghetti? Um, well, it's not actually spaghetti, Steve. <laughs> Don't get distracted by the food idea. <laughs> it's a, a big piece of spaghetti, but it's yeah. not made of spaghetti right. or pasta. Um, yeah, so he's got a pool noodle in there. It's not Kushko, but I figure it's something's better than nothing. Yes, yeah, so no, it's very good. And finally, yeah. he's got a 29er front wheel edge to replace the 27.5. Oh, I like uh, that a lot. That's a nice touch. Yeah, that is. I that mean, is. that's a huge subject by himself, itself, right? Yeah, let's not get you distracted on that. That's oh. even worse than uh, talking about pasta. You're getting caught up on 29 front wheels. But, yeah, but there you go. Uh, send us in your uh, e-bike upgrades and customization. We'd love to see what you guys are doing out there in the hills. Climb of the week is one of my favorite bits of the show, actually, because I really think that EMTB has got a great opportunity in trials. I think totally. there's something there, and Climb of the Week is sort of the, the seed to that. Yeah. So what we need is for you guys to send us your Climb of the Weeks. So you've got to get out there, be brave, take some things it's on. It's easy, easy thing to do, Mark. It definitely is. What we thought we'd do to get you excited is we'd go to one of the very best. We'd try and find one of the riders out there that does things with e-bikes no one else does. So. We got this from Steve Jones. Oh, get out of here, seriously? Oh my God, <laughs> check out this little bit of uh, climbing by Steve uh, Jones look, on a bit of log work. Look, in all seriousness, Martin, all, in, without all that nonsense that's gone before, I think I just couldn't help myself. A yeah. pile of logs, it's just Good there. Fun. It's just asking for it, right? Yeah. Obviously yeah. this is on private land, it wasn't on Forestry Commission land. So, obviously. Uh, ob obviously not, so uh, don't do this at home if it's on someone else's land, like I got permission to do this. Yes. Uh, but yeah, pile of logs, Asking for it. Yeah. Asking for yeah. it. Don't miss how great e-bikes can go up things. Don't always think down. Martin, which brings us on to... Where in the world? Where in the world? We know And that. this week we are in Squamish. Oh. This is Why is the light not going on? Wait, the, there world, it is. the world stopped working. There it is. Um, Squamish. She's rolling again, the world's rolling. Yeah. Squamish, great spot. And this shot, look at this shot. It's from David Morona. Yeah, yeah. Um, out in the trees. Yeah, and it is an inspiring looking shot. Do you know man. what, I've been, a Squamish, I've been to Squamish a few times and um, I've not seen stuff like that, so I'd like to go back there. It looks like you're struggling to find it, Steve, to me. That's oh, what it looks shut like. up. Someone hasn't Squamish got is right on. there. There it oh, is. It's a long way north, isn't it, uh, yeah. Vancouver? Yeah. A long way north. Yes. I want to be down here in the heat. Yeah, but that shot looks great. That nice one, David. Great. Yeah. Thanks Send us in your you. pictures from around the world. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Oh, Matt, tell you what, it's nice to have the air conditioning working and switched off. Yeah, but you know what? I'm starting to get a little bit cold, Steve. Yeah, well, that looks nice. It's nice, isn't it? It's my EMBN woolly hat. Now, I'll grant you, this probably isn't the season for woolly hats. <laughs> But I just wanted to say, uh, going into our shop and uh, supporting the channel by looking at our products, taking something on like one of our tees, some of our hats, giving us some support is what helps us make great videos. Yeah. So go and check out all the great stuff we've got in the shop. Um, hey, buy yourself something, why not? Treat yourself. So finally, it's that time of the week that I'm always looking forward to, and the nervous anticipation that has been sat next to me, Martin Ashton, where I can get stuck in to love some it. real banter. I love the bike vault. I love it. Love the bike vault. Let's do it. Right, first what we got? bike this week is from Carl Beavers. Idaho. Uh, Specialised in Idaho. What do you think of that, Steve? It's got a bit lost in the background. Could have done with a bit of horizon, but... Just my opinion. What do you think? Super nice or nice? Nice. Oh, blimey. We're moving on quick. Sorry, Carl. Nice, though. It yeah, is nice. Nice, nice. Right, next up. Oh, same bike. Chris Kane's in Auburn. Oh, specialised to doing well. Um, I like that colourway on that bike, and that is a better photo. Lots of height in the background. It's the a bike long... looks epic. Looks like it's been on a hell of a ride to get there. It's a long way down to that river. I think, Steve, that's our first super nice this week. Boosh! Bang! Absolutely. Love it. Next uh, up. Gary Clark. In um, Gisborne. Gisborne. Yeah, that's Gisbra. nice. I feel like it's quite a lot of filter on this photo. Mm. Yeah. Quite a lot of rock on the right, too. That's yeah, a like Cannondale that. Motero, that is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a bit of sandstone. I Love it. I think it's nice. 
Nice. It's a nice. It's a definite nice, nice from Gary. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Uh, next up, Jay Bishop. Jay Bishop. Jay. Look at Jay. That Jay. Beast. See, Jay. Seriously. Ooh. I mean, you've got your leg in the shot. Yeah, I mean, I, it's lazy. I love it. Absolutely, it's lazy. It. It's lazy. I love it. Do you know no. what? I've seen the way you can uh, mount bikes. That is a classic. That is original. Wait. I'm into that. What you I'm, that? I'm bordering on super nice there, but go on then. Put well, your money where your mouth is. <laughs> is it a super nice or not? Put your money where your leg is. Look it's at that. super nice. Let's do it. It's there different. Go. Super nice. Super nice. Good. Well done. Uh, Ooh, Mark, Mark Anderson in Norfolk. Pivot. Bit of a British theme good on this week, Martin. Oh, it could be. There could oh. be. Um, yeah, I, I tell you what, I think it's all the lovely sunny weather we've been having. Um, it could for be. Once. Yeah. Uh, I like that a lot. That's a nice looking Pivot. bike. Love Pivot the trail. shuttle. Trail leading away in the background. It's very suggestive. Lots of fun. Suggestive. Yeah, you know, I want the image. I want the image to tell me what the person's been doing, and that does. He's well, out on a nice like ride. He's been gardening. Rhododendrons. He's been gardening. Lovely. He's been gardening, he just thought, oh, I'll bring the bike and prop it up there and chuck it in. That's all he's been doing. He's not been there. That's, that's, no. I'm feeling a nice. nice from you. Nice, yeah. yeah it's nice. a nice. Yeah. Well done, Mark. Next up, oh, epic shot. What? Racing. What he's been racing. He's got his numbers on. It's Neil oh, Bailey. And his first ever race at the Welsh Gravity Enduro. Oh, I like that a lot. Do you know what's interesting, Very Mark? These, all these shots came, these are, these are taken straight off my emails. Yes. And it shows everybody in the UK is absolutely flat out e-biking. And they're in, they're in date order. There's nothing, it's just yeah. by chance this happened. Yeah, so it shows that we're really pushing it here in the However, UK. However, have you got mud tires on your bike? Uh oh. What? It's not the time for mud tires. Those are mud tires. Neil Bailey, you just dropped down to a nice. Oof. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> what the hell? Patricia Holmberg in Finland. Oh my God. At least lean it against something. Breaking and all the, the rules. Bars up. Patricia, sorry, there's no love gone into this shot whatsoever. Patricia, you have got lucky. There's a lot of people who put a lot of effort to get their bike in the bike vault. Martin, Somehow, Martin, you've let's got quickly move on. I mean, I'm furious. Oh, that is how you do it. That's better. Really. Now that, That's look at down. that. That's calmed me down. Uh, it's a very nice looking bike from Tom in the Lakes. That, lovely to me. Bit of, lovely bit of sculpture. No, this is classic uh, photograph uh, skills here. You have the bike against a nice background. You can see everything about the bike. You've got some blue sky, you've got some rocks. I think there's that's one of the best bikes I've ever seen in the bike vault. Until you notice the rear mud guard, <laughs> and then you're sick. It's awful. You would have got a super nice, but you put that tragic mud guard on, it's ruined my day. Nice. Exactly, because it's a dry weather. Why on earth have you got a mud guard on the bike? That's a solid nice, and it could have been more, Tom. It could have been more. It could have been way more. Oh, man. You what have we got? How many have we got left? Next up. Oh, my got... God. Look at that one. Thomas Christensen in, where's that? Ryuk Danofsen in, can you pronounce that? That is Rikan Danfersen in Hemsedale in Norway. I've Whoosh. got no idea if that's right or not. That's not far off, Mark. Um, it's, well, I don't know. I think a waterfall in the background is doing a lot of work. A lot of work. You know, yeah, the bike, right. yeah, right. it's nice. Yeah, but it's he's nice. thinking about going to some nice places. It's yeah. nice, yeah. It's, it's, it's placid, though. All right, move on. Next, there you go. There Vic you go. Ferrari, Goat Roper Trail in Las Vegas. That is a punch in the gut. Bit of dust. <laughs> Bit of sun, uh, heat. I can feel the heat in that photo. I can feel the heat. You Vic I mean? Ferrari. You've captured something there. Vic from Ferrari has got a super nice. Oh, and we're out the bike vault. That's the last one. Shame, I could have done that all day. Honestly. I'll bet you Vic, guys Vic Ferrari nailed it for me. Yeah, that was a nice finish. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, if you guys want to get your bike in the bike vault, then you should, because it feels fantastic. You can send them in to hello at embn.com. We'll take a look. Uh, we'll put them in the pot, mix it up, and you never know, they might appear on next week's show. How good would that feel if you got a nice or a super nice? It'd yeah. feel great. Coming up on the channel this week, on Sunday, your chance to win some fantastic POC clothing. We've got unboxing of the VPD2 and the VPD Air systems. Nice, very cool. Um, and don't forget, you can click here to see Chris and Blake having a play at the local bike park, a bit of a head-to-head. -head. That's a big head-to-head. E-bikes -head. E versus conventional bikes. Gotta watch that one. Like it a lot. Um, of course, there's the globe there. You can hit it to subscribe. Thanks for watching this week, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like. We'll see you next time.